are unlapping. Why do I always sing? I like it. You I like it? It's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a great addition to this show. Already. Do you think so? Yeah. Okay. Well, we had Nate sing at one point. I think it's Zanvor last year, <laughs> and uh, right. and he's never repeated it. So I'm, I'm actually quite quite. <laughs> it scarred me so much. Yeah. Coming from. I'm glad someone else has taken on that mantelpiece. We're excited. I'm excited that we're finally back in person. Last time we saw each other was in New York for Red Bull's launch. Now we are getting ready for the Miami Grand Prix, the fifth race of the season. You guys have been on the ground a little bit longer than I have. How does it feel to be here? Uh, I'm, I'm still getting over the flight from Baku because <laughs> was, I was in Baku with you and the like drivers two days ago, and I've done. It's been great. I've done so much stuff since I've got here. So when uh, we come to United States races, ESPN rolls into town big time. Like mm -hmm. usually, it's just. Nate and I kind of like <laughs> yeah. annoying people around paddocks. And then all of a sudden we come here and there's lights and there's cameras and there's action and it's great. So um, yeah, I've had a great couple of days. Uh, talked to Lewis Hamilton, which is always a privilege. Um, I'm actually been really lucky. I talked to him um, in Baku as part of a written feature and then we mm -hmm. did a little piece for camera as well, uh, which is on YouTube, little plug there. Um, <laughs> Go uh, watch. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was really good. So relaxed um, and in such a good mood. Uh, so it's been fantastic. And then today, I mean, this is great. I, I did a hot lap. I know, which we can't wait to hear about. Yeah, I, I did a whole lot with George Russell, but we can go into that later. Let, 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 let's not get yeah, don't spill stuff. it all yeah, at the top. Yeah, sure. How are you? Can you compare? I can't. To that com I can't compete. <laughs> I might just leave the pod at this point because I think all of it's going to be Lawrence talking. Um, no, I mean, I'm. You know, we, we joke about it a lot. I'm a big fan of all things America, but I th it's been great coming back here and seeing the you know the paddock here is fantastic. And um, I've got to say, I think that naturally the hype for this race is probably a bit more muted than last year. But that's natural when you come for first race versus second race. But I'm quite excited to be back. And I think that there's, they've done so much new with it. It feels like they've really tweaked a lot of things. And you know, the paddock's a bit more spread out. So it's been nice. Um, no hot laps, though. I need to, I need to obviously work on my contacts because Lawrence has uh, <laughs> I did one in Austin in 2018 with Lando. And I haven't had one since. So, I, you know, there's a five-year drought for me of, of hot labs. <laughs> which, 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 by the out. way, if you can get hold of the video, I think it's still on YouTube. It should be on it YouTube is, somewhere. It is, it is. Yeah. Um, Nate uh, asks Lando questions as he goes around, which is a great idea. And, and as he's going around, he's got his little notebook in front of him, and it's getting more and more, like, Because I was, I was, you know, because you're holding it and because the force is... And when I came back, Lawrence said, how was it? I was like, good, check this out. And it was, it like... Crumpled. It was just crumpled, like it had been in space and come back through the atmosphere or something. <laughs> it was, it was mad. So, but yeah, they, they were really great experiences. Unbelievable when you actually get the, the that experience from, especially when a driver's driving you, because you suddenly realise my life is in the hands of a guy who drives like this fast all the time. Which is unnerving. Yeah, I, unnerving I, I, I couldn't imagine having um, actually participated in a hot lap, so they're just showing off and bragging. Although I am going to track down Gunther Steiner and heckle him because if you remember when he came on unlapped a couple weeks ago. He said, next time I see you, I might just have you join me for a hot lap. So I should take him up on it. Absolutely. I don't yeah. know. Should I trust him? I mean, I, I don't know if I trust. I mean, <laughs> I barely yeah. trust George Russell and <laughs> Gunter Seiner, you know, great personality in Formula One. But is he a great driver? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's one way to find out, I suppose. That it's is true. quite dangerous. But that is true. But you are giving, I mean, your will to another person, which is just yeah, beyond and, me. And for it to be Steiner, I think I would politely decline that one. <laughs> I would just be like, look, Gunther, I like you as a, as, a, as a human being, but as a driver, I'm not. It's not the same. It's not the same. Well, film. let's dive into it because I actually had a chance. We're recording this on a Thursday, depending on when you're listening or watching on YouTube. I had a chance to sit down with George Russell today, and I asked him, I said, did Lawrence Edmondson squeal? Uh, how was he in the ride along? And he said, actually, you got the best lap of the day because the tires were shit at that point and it's so hot i mean it's mm. unbelievably hot in miami yeah. we know that it's very very humid but he said at that point you guys were just sliding every which way how was it it, it, it was crazy so i was very lucky i actually got two hot laps i got one with bern schneider who's a mercedes legend uh yeah i wasn't expecting two i expected one anyway so I, I got the one with ben schneider and he was on it like uh he's uh like very methodical about it. he's like this is where the breaking zone is okay. this is where the breaking zone would be in formula one and it was great uh, George comes along. I was like, oh, great. We are going to get the George hot lap. And uh, by that point, Ben Schneider put the car under quite a lot of stress. It was making some weird noises. Like, apparently, the engine was overheating. I overheard one guy being like, uh, do you know if we still got enough fuel in the car to keep doing these laps? Because, like, George had turned up and, you know, started doing it late and Ben had already done a whole bunch of them. Uh, and then the big concern with the tires. So I, I get in and, uh, like, George is kind of talking out the window to Ben Schneider, the other driver. And he says, uh, Ben, like... There's this weird vibration on the straights. Like, is, is that normal? Is, is there something wrong with the rear tires? Bern Schneider ducks down, looks at the rear tires. He's like, I don't know anything about tires. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, right. George, this is not reassuring. Like, yeah. I, I just sat in this car. Anyway, short of it is that it was 
amazing fun. Like, I mean, that guy that can drift. Like, we, we see the car control they have the whole time in Formula One, and sometimes you see them lose the rear end, and that's kind of a mistake. They're trying not to do that the fastest way, is to keep it all neat and tidy. But yeah, put them in a car like that. It was a Mercedes AMG GTR, for anyone who's into their cars. About, I don't know, 500, 600 brake horsepower to the rear wheels, uh, very light, and he was just sliding it everywhere. And yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. That's wild. I mean, and that's kind of the fun thing. Like, I think people sometimes see the safety car, and they're just like, that must just be some dude driving that car. But it's like, no, the guy, the guy can drive. Yeah, He's yeah. really, really good. Yeah, because and, um, how fast do you think they're going in the safety car? Fast. So, well, the, the fastest we hit on the straight, and we were going flat out in that car, was 140 miles per hour. Okay. Which wow. um, is nothing compared to the F1 cars. They're doing nearly 200 at that mm -hmm. point. But when the <laughs> when you've got concrete walls either side, and again, you're not in control, and you're not fully harnessed in, you're just wearing a normal. Uh, three-point seat belt it's pretty pretty scary yeah so um the, the safety car uh i i think will maybe a bit be a bit under that because it's really just about controlling the pace sure. um you know it's it's there for safety not for driving flat out but um yeah you know they'll, they'll be going over 100 miles per hour they, and in an f1 car that will feel desperately slow and you'll be losing tire temperature and you'll be worried about all sorts of things getting ready for the restart so um it's crazy just the level that the, these guys are on and the level that these cars are on it's it's I'm I remember the first time I did a hot lap was with McLaren's eSports driver. And he said as we got in, you said George unnerved you about the tires. When we got in, the first thing he said to me was, he was like, this is my first lap of the track. And I suddenly realized, I was like, I'm, I'm in a car with a guy who's used to his car being able to respawn on the racetrack. And he's now just going to take me. You know, he was great. Rudy Van Buren, a great, great, great lap. But that thought was in my head for the whole lap. And it, it was mildly terrifying because I was like, I hope he knows... I can't respawn. I've never been able to do that in my life. Have you ever tried? Okay. Well, no, I didn't want to, but, you know, uh, there was one point we, we got very close to a wall and I was, like, you know, closing my eyes. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's scary in a good way. When you actually got to see the track, not a whole lot of changes have been made to what we saw a year ago in the inaugural Miami Grand Prix. Some shortening of DRS zones, which mm. we will talk about because that seems to be what all the drivers are talking about this week leading in after what was a pretty boring Baku race. What did you notice about the track as compared to what we had studied a year ago? Yeah, so the big thing is they've resurfaced it. If you remember last year, there were a few parts of the track which started to crumble and started to break up. Um, I don't think it was actually that bad in the end because the drivers just deal with it. The teams just deal with it. Like, you know, it is what it is. It's the same for everyone. It's the same track. By the way, if you can hear that, that's uh, some pit stop practice going on at Aston Martin. Uh, it's pretty cool coming through. Um, yeah, so they, they've resurfaced it all, and it does look super smooth. But Burnt, who I think had done a, a hot lap before, was saying, oh, actually, he feels like there's less grip. But we're talking about a hot lap car, not a Formula 1 car, so I don't know if it'll be slightly different when they get out there. I think it'll be fine once they lay a bit of rubber down. But otherwise, no, it's, it's, it's much the same. And, you know, there was that uh, tight bit where we saw Carlos Sainz and Esteban Ocon both hit the wall with quite big accidents. That hasn't really changed. In fact, when you're going around it, it looks even tighter with the barriers um, being so close. I don't know if it is officially, but um, it certainly looks tight. So, yeah, it's very much the same track it was. Um, I have to admit, I wasn't the biggest fan of this track last year when I first saw it on paper. Um, you know, if you want to be really rude about it, you call it a car park track because it is in the former car park of the Miami Dolphins, but we won't be rude about it. And, and uh, having gone and done it, having like, been around it, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's serious. And it's a lot like a street circuit. The, the walls are in on you, they're close. Any mistake can be yeah, punished heavily. And I think, I think as well with circuits, <clears throat> you're only ever one entertaining race away from people being like, I love going there. Baku has had bad race, great race, bad race, great race, bad race. Great. And people remember the great races, but it had a bad race last week. And no one was like, oh, Baku's a terrible circuit. But it can, it can be. So I think if Miami, if this Sunday they have a crazy race, lots happening, the narrative around the track does change as well. So I think um, and it, it has that potential. Most circuits have that potential, don't they? There's a, enough areas where someone can crash out of a race, you can get a good safety car, you can get passing. So I'm really hoping that for Miami. I mean, Miami and for the season generally as well. Speaking of Baku, a lot of drivers in their media sessions were asked about the shortening of the DRS zones. There wasn't a lot of overtaking. Obviously, there was a long train. Guys got stuck. They don't seem to be happy with the current situation. You guys have had multiple conversations. You mentioned speaking with Lewis. You got to have spend some time with Oscar Piastri, Lando Norris, and Logan Sargent as well. Just kind of what's the takeaways that you're receiving from you know guys through those conversations? 
So, yeah, to give a bit of background, the, the FIA control how long the DRS zones are. And the idea of DRS is not to just allow an overtake to happen. It's not just so that somebody can press a button and go straight past. The idea is to set up overtaking into corners and so just all close gaps as they go around. Because these cars, even though they changed them in 2022, they're still really hard to follow each other. Um, so that's the idea of DRS. And so they are constantly tweaking it and tailoring it. Uh, to make sure that it's not too long, so overtakes don't become too easy, and you can, you know, you can't have it both ways. Like yeah. the the Red Bull was sailing past people, and a lot of time it's not just the DRS that's a factor. There's tyres involved. There's a the competitiveness of the two cars and all that kind of stuff. So th th there's all sorts of stuff going on. But I think there's always a reaction, isn't there? When we get a dull race, and this happens so much in yeah. Formula One, it's like it's all broken. What, what magic thing do we need to do to the sport to change it? And the reality is, is the there is nothing magic you can do. These cars are always going to be influenced by their aerodynamics. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's how they're designed. And and as you add more and more downforce onto these cars, they're more reliant on those, you know, the, the wings and the underfloor. And therefore, they're more affected by turbulent air. And it's just it's just a matter of physics. And it's it's always been the same as long as we've had wings on racing cars. So it's, it's unfortunate, but I don't think it's it's the end of And look, if we have a good race on Sunday, then I think yeah. conversations will completely change. If we have a bad race on Sunday, everyone will double down. Yeah. Uh, it's not long until we, like Imola's never been great for overtaking. No, Monaco's no, not great for overtaking. <laughs> yeah. It's so, not the so, greatest so stretch. We, 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 we could go into really bad stage. And also, look, if it was competitive between uh, Red Bull and Mercedes at the front or Ferrari and Red Bull at the front, no one would be talking be, about yeah. this. Yeah, if they were yeah, competitive yeah, yeah. races and they weren't finding a way to pass, but it was right on the edge over who wins and who doesn't, that's what makes F1 great. And at the moment, we don't have that for different reasons. And yeah, we won't go into those here now, but another podcast maybe we'll. Well, yeah, and one thing Lando said to me was, um, he said, you know, in football games and soccer games, you have loads of nil-nil draws. You don't get to the end of one and say, well, let's make the goals twice as big to get more goals in. You're like, all right, I watched the game. It wasn't great. But, you know, you saw two teams still fighting it out and they couldn't win. You know, cricket, you know, I know that that's a fascination in America, but people play for five days and still draw. You know, and they have tried to change cricket a little bit, but they, they, they tie, Nate. They tie. Sorry, 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 they tie, not draw. Sorry, that, oh, that's they? a big giveaway about where I'm from. News to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, I think um, it. Yeah, we we've had this a lot. Lawrence and I've worked in Formula One for a long time now. I remember when Lewis was dominating, you'd have five five quite boring races in a row, and you'd have people being like tear the whole rule book up, change it again. And then you'd get two races where you're like, wow, that's one of the best races I've seen for years. Just because, you know, the, var the variables in the race was great. So we'll get one this season. I mean, you, you look at some of the races we had last year, same set of rules, same cars that were made, you know, to, to improve overtaking. We had Silverstone, which was an incredible race. We had a bunch of races where all sorts of things happened, you know, but it wasn't 23 times a year. It was a handful of times, right? So we'll, we'll get that again this year, I'm sure. And also don't forget, if we'd stuck with the old regulations, which is basically the only other option we yeah. had, it would have just got worse. It was already getting bad. It was already getting difficult to overtake, and it would have just got worse. So there is, there's been a step. It's just these cars, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, are difficult to race. But shouldn't that give you a better appreciation for when you do actually get to witness a great race yeah. that you shouldn't take it for granted because it's not something that can be fabricated and replicated over and over and over again. So I, I just think that maybe a hold the horses a little bit. Um, well, and it's, it's also the same with a great championship as well. We don't sure. always get a championship that goes to the final race. It does happen in Formula One, not every year. So it means when you get a 21, when you get a 16, you get 2014, whatever, it's like, wow, this is, you've waited a few years for this. Might not be everyone's cup of tea, but some people might want a great thing every year, but I watch the Super Bowl every year. Some of them aren't very good, no, but I still watch fair. them. I still love them. So, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. Speaking of championships, um, the constructors might be locked up uh, here soon, but in terms of the driver's standings, there's just six points between teammates Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez, which... I think is uh, a narrative we're all going to cling to for now. <laughs> it's, it's the it's the Bottas 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, but done again with Perez, isn't it? We yes. did that a lot under Lewis. So yes, yeah, it is. Are we overhyping it for now? Um, yeah, I think we have to let this season settle in. Uh, I think Checo is driving better than he did yeah. before, and that is really important. You know, the, his performance in Baku, he got lucky with the safety car, sure. Like you know, Max got unlucky with that, sure. But Checo's performance after that point was on a level that we hadn't seen that many times uh, last year. And over the course of the weekend, you know, we had that weird format, uh, sprint race format, where there was one practice session and Checo got it locked in. Max was always struggling a bit and it just all went Checo's way. But, you know, you've got to win those races when that happens. You know, if you're going yeah. to challenge for championship and he did. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I think there's, there's some positives there. I look back at last year after four races, 
there was a five point difference between those two drivers. Of course, Leclerc was slightly further ahead, so no one was really focusing on it. So I don't think we can just say straight away, look, we're going to have a super competitive season. Well, whoever, these guys are Team Perez, obviously. They'll just turn the music up. Um, <laughs> we need a cocktail. Yeah. It's getting lively here in Miami. I would, I would love to buy into the hype around Perez ob for obvious reasons. But I think Lawrence is right. You look at last year, and it's the middle stretch of the season where we kind of get away from street circuits where Perez last year lost a lot of points to Max. So we'll see. It would be amazing. This weekend, the best thing that can happen for the championship is Perez winning this race sure. and Max not finishing. Because even if, even if Max is the best driver for the rest of the season, that's a huge points gap now. No, that's the sure. one thing. I think we spoke about it, didn't we, before, that um, the big thing this season is those two guys should be finishing 1-2. I know. I've, I've never spoken with this kind of music behind you. are going to start singing this? <laughs> 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 no, Unlapsed. No, that's terrible. We're going to stick with you singing, Katie. Yeah, I think that's enough. bad. Um, but there's so many, usually there's so many points at stake in races. But when it's you and your teammate, you should only really be taking seven, eight points out of each other a race. So suddenly, yeah. if you get a 26-point uh, swing over someone, that's four or five races to, to claw back. So that could be really interesting if we get a DNF for Max early. Of course, it could go the other way. If we get a DNF for Checo, they'll be really deflating because he's then the one who has to make that time up. So I think it is on, it's not on a knife edge in terms of their performances, but there are things that could make it really interesting really quickly like that, I think. The three teams behind Red Bull that have been really close throughout the start of this season. I, I can't believe, this is race five. Testing feels like ages ago. I don't oh, know yeah, how it feels yeah, for you guys 100%. who have been on the road, but it feels like ages ago. And so we've seen some progress made, but Assen, Mercedes, Ferrari, right there together. I had a chance to speak with Charles Leclerc earlier today. I wouldn't say he was oozing optimism, but there was a sliver of hope after Ferrari got their first podium of the season with him in Baku. Who do you think of those three teams needs to have the biggest weekend here in Miami? Here in Miami, uh, I'd say Aston Martin are probably the ones to keep a look on. I, I, I feel like the track will suit them. I've we talked about this a lot, haven't we? Different tracks and who it suits. And I actually usually get it wrong at this stage of the season. <laughs> but um, but it's only because it varies so much like weekend to weekend. Actually, Aston Martin probably would have had a pretty good weekend in Baku mm -hmm. had the DRS been working in uh, in qualifying. So um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's one of those things where it depends a little bit on how, how the race goes. It's so tight between those three teams. If you remove Red Bull, it's incredibly tight. You don't really know going into each weekend and set up choices, small things can make a big difference. You know, lost time in a practice session can make a big difference. But uh, my gut feeling is uh, it's probably going a little bit more Aston Martin's way here. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Feel the same? I think so, yeah. And I think Fernando's driving so well at the moment. He's just getting so much out of that package. So yeah, I'd say that as well. Best of the rest. Alpine certainly, I think, needs to bounce back. Who do yeah. you feel like has some pressure? McLaren, obviously, yeah. got stuck in the train in Baku. Which team do you feel like really needs to make a push here from that well, latter group? I think Alpine does because Baku was, like, they should have been much better in Baku and they really kind of dropped the ball there. So they come into it needing to kind of make up those points. McLaren's a weird one, isn't it? Because I think they're just happy to see any progress at the moment from where they started. Um, so I don't know, but I think Alpine should be leading that pack. So they've got to come here and they've got to make up for what they did last week. But it's really tight back there. Yeah, last week and Australia, remember how competitive they were throughout the Australian yeah. Grand Prix Alpine, and then they had the accident on the final restart, and that took out both drivers. So that, um, yeah, they've got a lot to uh, kind of claw back as a result of that. That, that car is quick. It, it is on paper, um, you know, the fifth fastest team. Uh, the question is still over a little bit over McLaren and where they are, because they brought a new update, a big update, um, the one which was basically setting right all the things they got wrong over the winter on that car. Um, but they brought it to Baku, it worked, definitely, mm -hmm. but they only had one practice session to get their heads around it. Yeah. So they're going to have a huge job list uh, throughout these three practice sessions to understand it, to run tests on it, uh, to tweak the setup to find out what works. And so I think you might see McLaren make actually another step as a result okay. of that, just by understanding. It's going to be weird having three practice sessions this week, isn't it? <laughs> after Baku, we're like, wait, wait, there's more of these? Like, what's going on? That's going to be Will awesome. you prefer it after the sprint format and the changes we saw in Azerbaijan? I think less practice is definitely better from a viewing experience, but I don't know. I mean, it did feel like they probably needed a bit more track time in Baku, but I don't know. Like, the teams and always tell you they want more. this is such a quick turnaround as yeah. well. Yeah, and it, I don't know. It. We always used to say, didn't we, less practice equals a crazier race, but then we had less practice in Baku and we had a really dull race, so it's not a perfect science at all so I was, let, ask me on Saturday about <laughs> you know an hour after practice and I'll Fair. see if we like three but okay. I, I think a mix is right you know we got we yeah. got six sprint races so yeah, at six exactly. occasions you'll have that and it can 
result in weird races, maybe it doesn't. But um, yeah, I, th I think having the mix is right. And I actually think you could do six sprint races, you could do the majority of races like this, three practice sessions, and then just have a few two-day weekends, you know, places yeah. where maybe you don't get such a big Friday audience, cut it back and um, everyone can ar arrive a day later, it can be much more focused. You still have that one practice session, you don't have the sprint, but qualifying and race. They did it in Miller 2020. I know I bang on about this quite a lot. I mentioned it before on the, on the <laughs> podcast, but I, I think that is a format that actually works for F1, but yeah. it's really down to the promoters because the promoters want to get the race promoters because they want to get people into the track and they want to have something they can show them on the Friday. So that's why that argument falls short. But I think a mix is, is the way to go forward and why not try a few more ideas as well? Yeah. Yeah. I know drivers love their home races, home country, by the way. Yeah. For Logan Sargent, I mean, the man was in karting like 10 minutes up the street from Hard Rock Stadium. This is the epitome of a home race from what's feasibly realistic for him in this weekend in front of what I assume is going to be a lot of family and friends. Yeah, he said he had about 100 requests from friends and family. <laughs> I'm sure. And he said, I'm not that famous yet. I can't get them. Um, so I think he's going to have quite a lot of people here. I don't know really. I mean, Williams Williams have actually been quite surprising with the pace they've shown this year, I think. Like, we didn't, we we kind of came into the year thinking, oh, they're going to be you know, dead last with pace. But we've seen quite, like, glimpses of that car being pretty quick. So, and it's, Logan has had, I think it's fair to say, quite an up and down rookie season so far. We've seen some really good glimpses, but we've seen some moments that haven't been so good. So, I think for him, he's got to just have a clean weekend, hope he can pick up some points. It's almost written, isn't it, that he'll get points in some way here. It'll be difficult for Williams to do that without some stuff happening above. But um, I think for him, that's what he's got to do. Clean, clean weekend. The story can't be Sergeant crashes out of home week, uh, sorry, home race, because suddenly that becomes, I mean, that's a story, isn't it? You know, and, and so I think for him, expectations are probably quite low. I think he just wants to have a good weekend. Good hosts would have uh, the receipts in front of her or him. I am a bad host. I can't exactly remember who you all predicted to be on podium in Baku. We, we don't need to talk about that. We don't, I remember. Oh, I, we no, don't need to talk I'm about just going to say I had two correct because I picked both Red Bulls. Oh, so I you, thought Sergio you, you was can remember do, yours and not I ours. <laughs> so I'm going to get back on that with the yeah. standings overall, but we're going to go ahead and make some predictions on this Thursday of who we think is going to stand atop the podium here in Miami. Right. I'm going to get boring because okay. uh, every time I go, like, and try and make something interesting happen, it doesn't. And then when I go boring, something good happens. So, <laughs> right, so I'm going Max Verstappen, Sergio Perez, Fernando Alonso. Because I, I, I did... You're ensuring madness. That's yeah. what you're doing yeah. by picking boring. I, I, I'm, I'm, exactly. That, that's the plan. Okay. Uh, it won't work. But, um, yes, yeah, so what was I going to say? Yes, I, I picked Fernando Alonso for the first time on the podium in Baku. Didn't uh, happen. And it didn't happen for the first time this year. So. Okay. Anyway, so I'm, I'm sticking with it. All right. No. I love it. I love it. Love so it. Max, Sergio, Fernando. So I'm going to go... I think I had a I had at least one or two points in the bag over Lawrence from earlier in the season. You did. So I'm but gonna now gamble. I'm involved, I'm so gonna, watch I'm, your back. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to gamble. I'm getting that Vegas spirit early. I'm going <laughs> to gamble a little bit. I'm going to say, I'm going to go with what I said earlier. I, I don't think Max will finish. So we'd go Perez, okay. Alonso, Hamilton. Nice. Uh, and, yeah, and I think I'd be great for the championship. It'd be great to see Lewis back up there. And I think Fernando, we keeps getting third or fourth positions. Yeah. If Max isn't in there, I think he's, he's up there uh, fighting for second. Oof. So very ballsy. Uh, but yeah, so that's me. I'm going to change it up by picking Max first. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to pick the two Ferraris, Charles and Carlos. I think that they're going to have a great weekend. I don't know if that's me hoping that they're going to have a great weekend, just so that there's more optimism for this team moving into the summer months. But we shall see. So that's my pick. Do we I feel? Mean, I, I think that's that's a very good pick. They finished P2, P3 exactly. a year ago. Like, and Charles in. Um, in Baku was the only opposition for the Rebel. Remember, he finished a sprint ahead of Max. Max had the damage because of George. We haven't talked about that yet. But um, uh, yeah, so they did make a big step and they have made a big step. It happened in Australia. They started to understand the car a bit more and then they pushed it forward again in Baku. So I think mean, that's a great choice. Quick tidbit real quick. Quick tidbit real quick. They clearly have the pace in qualifying. We, we've seen that. Yeah. Do you feel confident that they'll figure out the pace when it comes to Sunday's race day, when they no, have to go the distance? Because I don't think it's down to Ferrari so much in that situation. I think it's just how good the Red Bull is in the race. Okay. So um, so I think the Red Bull, uh, you know, just with the way it uses its tires and everything, over a single lap, it's good. Like, yeah. it's still by far the best, but it's the, the gap isn't as big. But then they come to the race and they've just, you know, they've just got something else there. So um, I, I think that's what we're looking at. And, you know, that's what, all the teams that have been very good in the past few years, of course, that's where they make their car good, in the race. That's where the points are handed out. 
you know, if you qualify on pole by 0 0.001 seconds, that's enough. Yeah, yeah. And then if you win the race by 20 seconds, you know, that's where you want to do it. So. Plus, Shaw didn't lose his AirPods, so I think he's feeling good coming this weekend. He managed to fish them out of that little gap. You know, that could have that could have messed him up mentally. You've got to go buy new AirPods. That's annoying, you know? So, I'm back in it. I like it. Ferrari. Fair. Nailed it. Nailed yeah. it. All right, we're going to have a pre-race show. 2.30 Eastern to 3.30 leading into the Miami Grand Prix. You can catch that on YouTube. Hit us with a five-star review wherever you get your podcast. We're going to enjoy ourselves in Miami. Cheers.